When I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost and how he healed me to the other. please it's good to see you in the house of the Lord today all the people that are here it's raining but you're here and we're glad to have you and uh, we're glad to see a young uh, person here that's never been here before uh, in this way been here before with a mother before the baby's born so uh, uh, I don't know if he leaped within the womb of her or not when he was in church but we're glad to have brother Micah Dale Bright with us give him a hand amen <laughs> Praise God. We're always glad to get new people. Sometimes you manufacture them, you know, but uh, we're glad to have them. We appreciate everybody. and We love all of you. And that's the key to it all. We have some things we need to pray about, but we want to receive our tithe and offering. But let us pray about a few things. Brother uh, Dean West passed away yesterday. We'll have the funeral uh, at the North Gaston. I'm going to be preaching the main part of the funeral and it'd be over there, so I, I'd like to say we can get word out. We'll just go over there to the funeral and, and not have church here Wednesday night, if that's okay, because a lot of people knew him. He's got relatives in the church here, and we would want to show our respect from the church. So if you'll remember that, Wednesday night we'll get the word out. We'll announce it on the 
phone and so forth. So is very close to the family. Dina, of course, is uh, my daughter-in-law, and that's her daddy. But he went to be with the Lord just little by little. He just faded out, and he's with Jesus now. And that's what life's all about. It's a place to get ready to leave. And that's what we're doing. And I have to leave here early Monday morning, which is tomorrow, and drive to Michigan and preach my brother-in-law's funeral on Tuesday. Then I got to get back in time for Wednesday night here at North Gaston. So you be praying for me and my wife. We'll have to do a lot of traveling quick. And we want God to help us and be with us. And Sister Scott's in bad shape. They say she could go on any time too. So let's pray for this family and all of our shut-ins. Brother and Sister Evans, Brother Lee Masters in the hospital. He needs our prayers. And of course, uh, Sister Simons and Sister Ball and Sister Hal and James Kirkpatrick. He needs prayer with his situation. And anybody else have prayer requests here? Spoken requests. If I left somebody out, I didn't mean to. <coughs> Your aunt Wanda. Also, Brother uh, McPeter's sister passed away. It's your sister. We want to remember that family. It was your niece that passed away? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I, I, she's the one that had the cancer. Sonia's mother. Let's remember this. Amen. Your sister, Brother Charles' sister. Let's pray for her. Anna Abernathy, let's remember this. Yeah, Sister Spears' brother. A lot of needs, a lot of needs. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the blessings of God that's here today. We thank you for the Holy Ghost. We pray that you'll move in this place. Touch our members. Touch the West family, God, and of course the Smith family, my brother-in-law's dad, Sister Scott, and all the names, Brother Lee Master, Brother Sister Evans, and those that need prayer, Sister Spears' brother, God, do a work there. Sister Simons. And now bless the offering, God, and the tithe as they come to bring it in Jesus' name. By the Holy Ghost, I pray. Amen. You can bring your tithe and offering at this time. Brother McPeters wanted me to mention to you folks, too, yesterday we actually had two folks, two saints go on to glory, and uh, both of them died of cancer, and that was his niece, um, Sister Sarah Knipe, and I don't know if you remember, but he led her to the Lord, and he gave a testimony of how God took her out of the hospital when she couldn't hardly move and healed her and was able to help her. So we had two folks, and this is Sister Sonia Aguilar's mother, and it's Cameron, uh, Brother Cameron Norton's grandmother. Uh, Sonia is Cameron's mother. So um, Sonia is, of course, hurting today. And I know that until you feel this emptiness of losing your loved one, you don't know how to describe it, do you? Many of you have been there and you've lost your mother, your dad, your siblings, or your husband or wife, Brother Gene West back here. He's um, the younger brother of Dean, and he was there with us, and I got to talk to him a little bit about his life. He got saved. He went out west um, in Texas, and he came back, and he said God was dealing with him, and he was living a life he wasn't happy with, 
And he said he came back and he said God saved him and he started going to Foursquare Pentecostal Church when he was about 25, 26 years old and he had been a Christian all that time and I really didn't know Gene that well up until the last few years. Uh, he had a ministry of his own. He would go around and, and minister in different areas and his, he said his wife got filled with the Holy Ghost. He lost his wife of cancer and uh, he's now lost his only brother of cancer. So many of you have, have been through this tough time, but I do want to say today, and I, I just want to take this time because many of you sent texts, you sent, you called us, and thank you so much for your love and outpouring. You've sent me texts, Dina texts, Jordan, and, and uh, Brother Jimmy Jones sent us a text and said, uh, please tell the family that we're praying for them. And uh, Dean West uh, lived 28 years. He had a heart attack. He was not ready to go meet the Lord. God spared his life, and he gave him 28 additional years, and he was a Christian, and he would tell everybody about it. And I, want, I just want to say this. He, the, the song came to my mind. I'm telling you, he can, and I know that he'll stand. And the second verse is, what can cause an old man that's about to say goodbye to lift up both of those dying hands with a tear running from his eye, with his loved ones gathered all around him, he can smile and say, don't fear, for the one that brought me through the storm will lead me on from here. Well, Dean was very weak. He couldn't lift his hands on Friday. But he called the family in. He said, everybody come in. And he went around the room with eye contact and every one of us. And he said, I love you. I love you all. And yesterday, right when he took his last breath, me and Brother Greg Fulbright walked in the room he took his last breath. Brother Shortridge was coming in the door just a few minutes later. And Sister Kay started hyperventilating. She couldn't breathe. She said, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And Mom walked in the room and went over and grabbed her and started praying for her. And Dad reached his hand and said, touch her. And she started speaking in tongues. And that, that hyperventilation left her immediately. Immediately her countenance changed. And several in the room there started speaking in tongues. The Holy Ghost I want to say thank you, Dad, for a pastor. Not long ago, he walked into a room where a demon-possessed girl was being prayed for by Matthew. Y'all don't know this probably because we didn't tell this story. But after that girl was delivered, she said, when that man walked in the room, authority walked in the room. Thank God for the spirit of authority. I want to say, Dad, I appreciate you. He didn't have to be there yesterday. I know that's his daughter-in-law's dad. But he walked in and his presence there. It's good to have a dad that is filled with the Holy Ghost and has authority to help you. And I want to say thank you to you all. I know that Brother, uh, Brother McPeter's family is going through it as well. Many of you have already experienced this. And I am now getting a taste of what you've experienced. And my heart goes out to you. But thank the Lord God Almighty. We're going to see him again. We're going to see them again. This is not the end. Thank God for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you could, let's all stand. I want to tell you one more thing. If you'll put this on the screen, Jeremy. This is what the family wanted to do. In lieu of flowers for the family, if you want to give a memorial, they want you to give this to Brother Turner's Israel ministry. You can see Sister Parr. And you can write on that or, or give here to the church and you can send that to Brother Turner. She'll make sure he gets it. Just put in memory of Dean West for Brother Turner's Israel ministry. If you're online, they've got the address, I believe, Reverend Daryl Turner. It's there for you. You can send that and just put a memo in memory of Dean West. Dean West. And that's what they would like to do. They want any memorials there, any flowers, if you're going to send anything or whatever, uh, that's much appreciated. But they feel like the money would, would, would be much better spent into a ministry like this. So um, if you could, if you could help me pray for um, the Knipe family today, they're really going through it as well. And uh, also um, Brother Ray Smith's family, my dad's brother-in-law, and then the West family. Can we pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to comfort them through this? Heavenly Father.
Can we just lift our hands and praise Him right now? That's what we're here for today. We're here to worship our Heavenly Father. Can we just sing that together? In the prayer. And let's sing it again. Oh, we're in the presence. Yes, we are. Hallelujah. Of Jehovah, God Almighty, Prince of they play it. Let's just meditate on God for a moment. Comfort your neighbor and say, aren't you glad we're in his presence today?
my name into his blessed book of life and he took my many sins away Well, I never could forget the day when Jesus wrote my name into his blessed book of life, and he took my many sins away. I'm going to sing this song that I talked about earlier. I know y'all know it's an old Henson song, and uh, Jordan's not on the drums today, but we don't need drums to praise God, do we? We can praise Him just in, with no music. So if y'all know this song, sing it to me. I'm still a little nasally, but I hope you don't mind. Well, who can speak to a cripple and the stand right up and walk? 
who can cause the deaf and dumb to hear and start to talk who can calm a fevered brow by saying let it be with just a little bit of clay touch him in the way their blind eyes can see i'm telling you he can and to know that he'll stand by your side when the world comes crumbling in for no one ever done what he's done he laid down his life but he rose to live again i'm telling you he can and to know that he'll stand by your side when the world comes crumbling in for no one ever done what he's done he laid down his life but he rose to live again you know what i don't like it without drums i'm sorry Play too. I'm a telling you he can, and I know that he'll stand right by your side when the world comes crumbling in. Telling you he can, and I know that he'll stand right by your side when the world comes crumbling in. For no one ever done what he's done. He laid down his life, but he rose to live again. What can cause an old man that's about to say goodbye? To lift up both of those dying hands with a tear running from his eye. With his loved ones gathered all around him, he can smile and say, Don't fear, for the one that brought me through the storm. Leave me home from here, I'm a telling you, he can. Yeah, I know that he'll stand by your side when the world comes a crumbling in. For no one ever done. He laid down his life, but he rose to live again. I was telling you he can, and you know that he'll stand right by your side when the world comes crumbling in. No one ever done what he's done. He laid down, hallelujah, he rose to live again. Calls an old man that's about to say goodbye. Lift up both those dying hands with a tear running from his eye. With his loved ones gathered all around him, he can smile, say, Don't fear, or the one that brought me through the storm. Leave me on from here, I'm telling you, he can. And I know that he'll stand by your side when the world comes crumbling in. Ever done what he's done? He laid down his life, but he rose to live again. For no one ever done what he's done. He laid down his life, but he rose to live again. In your standing, if you will, please. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Luke, St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 5 and verse 17 through 19. 
Luke chapter 5, verse 17 through 19. Amen. Aren't you glad to be in the Lord's house today? Appreciate you being here. Some of you drive a good distance, but we appreciate you coming. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to preach this morning. I pray the Spirit of the Lord upon me. Touch every person here. Break every yoke and every fetter. And let your will be done in people's lives. Save the lost and touch those that are grieving because of death. We know it's coming, seeming like we're having more just at this one time. But comfort us together. In Jesus' name, amen. Shake hands with somebody next to you and say, I'm so glad I came to church. <coughs> Good to have the Williams family with us. They drive all the way from Rock Hill to be here, and we appreciate them. And, of course, others drive a good ways. Appreciate you. Amen. I'm reading from Luke chapter 5 and 17 through 19. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And behold, men brought in a bed a man which was taken with a palsy. And they sought means to bring him in and lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst of Jesus. I'm going to preach this morning on a subject, the occupied Christ. You can be seated if you will, please. Jesus was a busy man. A lot of people didn't like him, but a lot of people did. But there was one thing about him that everybody wanted, and that was to see him. Even the critics wanted to come by and see Jesus. They wanted to hear what he said because he spoke like no other man spoke. They wanted to see what he did because he did what no other man could do. But some were there just to criticize and through curiosity. But there were many people who were consistently seeking his service. As I said, some came for the wrong reason. But there were those that came for the right reason. Jesus had power to serve the humanity that he was facing of his day. That was his purpose in coming into the world was to serve humanity. But again, he was busy. In our text, we have the example of how Jesus was occupied. And I want to preach as I'm preaching, as I announce the occupied Christ. This man had the palsy and he couldn't walk. He couldn't get to Jesus But he had heard a lot about him. And so I don't know how the story unfolds, just a little bit of imagination. I think he thought, well, I'm paralyzed. I can't get to him. Somebody's got to take me to Jesus. And there were some people that knew Jesus was around and they had probably been there when he was healing the sick and they had heard the words that he was saying So they decided to go get this man and take him to Jesus. And when they got there, Jesus was occupied. He was busy. There was a crowd everywhere and they couldn't get in. But they didn't give up. They had faith in Jesus Christ. And the man that was carried, he probably also had faith or he wouldn't let them take him to where Jesus was. So they went up on the roof and went through the tiling and let him down in the midst of Jesus. And he's coming down and immediately Jesus again, I say, was busy. He was doing for everybody and it was hard to do for everybody. 
So he says, thy sins are forgiven thee. And there were Pharisees and scribes sitting there and they were in the crowd too. I don't know where they were sitting, but they may not have been sitting close enough for Jesus to hear what they were saying or know what they were thinking and they were probably talking and gibbering among themselves. Who does he think he is? He can't forgive sins. He's not God. Only God can forgive sins. But as busy as Jesus was, he wasn't only busy to heal the sick and his thoughts were on that man with a palsy. Jesus knew what they were thinking among all that crowd. He was occupied, but yet he knew what they were thinking. He knows everything. He knows your name. He knows where you live. He knows everything about you. Just bear with me a little bit. I'm trying to preach this morning. A little bit of problems physically, but just help me through this. So here Jesus is, and and they're grumbling. Jesus said, whether it's easier to say, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to take up your bed and walk. Now you think that if I told him to walk, It would be astronomical. It would be something wonderful, but I'm gonna do something for him that's more important than him walking. I'm gonna hand him a home in heaven. I'm gonna wipe out his past of conviction that bothers him about his sins. And no doubt the man being paralyzed, you don't know why he thought he was paralyzed as like he was, but he had a lot of time to think because he could not get up and walk. He couldn't do anything. He just had to lay there until somebody did something for him. So what he is thinking and his attitude toward Jesus was he was hearing something that he would not have heard. He could have thought, I don't know why I'm like this, but he was helpless. But their faith, when Jesus saw their faith, Sometimes you have to have faith for somebody else. Somebody's bound by the devil. They can't help themselves. They can't get to Jesus. They may be able to walk. They may be physically able to get there, but they can't get there because they're bound in the spirit. Satan has warped their minds and they've heard so many things until Jesus doesn't mean much to them. They're in that condition. They can't get to Jesus. Somebody has got to get the paralytic to Jesus. And his sins were forgiven him. And Jesus just simply made a statement. Take up your couch and go home. Your sins are forgiven. I'm gonna deal with two things in your life. I'm dealing with your body and I'm dealing with your soul. Now when Jesus deals with us, he deals with the inward man, but he deals with the outward man. He deals with our body. He deals with our vessel. He deals with us as a temple. Some people say it don't matter about your body. Well, Jesus forgave him, and that's most important, but he did something for his body where he wouldn't have to sit around and think about things and be tormented because he couldn't go anywhere. Jesus fixed him to where he could live on his own. And when you really get a deliverance by Jesus Christ, he will fix you where you don't have to depend on everybody else. He didn't need those men after he met Jesus, but he needed them before he met Jesus. But after he met Jesus, he didn't have to depend on man anymore. And I'm telling you, when you meet Jesus, you don't have to depend on man anymore. You want them to help you. (coughs) Excuse me. You want them to bless you. You want to fellowship them. But you don't need them to get to heaven. He needed them to get to Jesus but he didn't need them to get to heaven. They couldn't take him there. They could take him to Jesus, but that's as far as they could get. 
But if you can get to Jesus, you don't have to go any farther. He has the answer. And he's not too busy for you. He's got time for this paralytic. He sees him coming down. He stops everything. Everybody's all around. There's a multitude there trying to get in the house. Nobody can get close to him hardly. But Jesus said, take up your couch and go home. And he went, picked up where on he laid and went, praising God and glorifying God for what he had done for him. And so the Bible lets us know that they were astonished and they glorified God and they were filled with fear when they saw it and said, we've seen strange things today. I'm telling you, when you get in the midst of Jesus, you're gonna get in the midst of something that's not ordinary. You're gonna get in something that's not normal. You'll get into the supernatural. You'll get led into the spirit and the power of God. So this man left there carrying his bed, walking on his own, but he got there with somebody else carrying him. When you get Jesus, you don't need anybody to carry you. He'll take over. He'll see you through. The same thing is true today. Jesus is occupied with our needs just like he was this man. We can touch him. He's looking for us to approach him. Think about all the millions and multitudes of people that are praying to him today. He's at the right hand of the Father, but he's not too busy. He can hear all of them, but he can hear one at a time. He knows all of them's need, but he knows your particular need. As we look at the occupying Christ, busy as he was, we see the heart of Jesus is occupied by us, or to us, for us. He sympathizes with us and our heart, heart hurts and our troubles. He's troubled over our situation. When Lazarus died, Jesus let him die. He loved Lazarus. He loved Martha. He loved Mary. And he got sick. Lazarus did. They sent to Jesus to come and heal him. Jesus stayed a couple more days. He wasn't in a hurry. He knew his power. He knew what he could do. So he told his disciples, I gotta go to Judea again. They said, there's 12 hours in the day. If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not because he seeth the light of this world. If a man walk in the night, he stumbleth because he has no light in him. So the, Jew, the disciples said, they've come to stone you if you go back to Judea. He said, I gotta go see Lazarus. But he tells them he's not afraid to go. And then uh, he said, Lazarus sleepeth. They said, if he sleep, he does well. They thought he was talking about taking death. They talking about death, but he was talking about taking rest and sleep. And Didymus, Thomas Didymus said, let us go to die with him. They thought Jesus was gonna die. But Jesus had a heart for Lazarus and he came and Martha went to meet him and Mary stayed where she was and Martha said, if you'd have been here, you'd not have died. The mourners had come and they'd already put him in the grave at four days, he stinks by now. But Jesus had a heart for Lazarus. He's got a heart for you. He didn't go to Calvary and die on that cross just because he wanted to prove a point. <coughs> he didn't have to prove anything. He just had to be the son of God. And he went there and he went to where Martha was and if you'd been here, my brother hadn't died. And Jesus said, your brother's gonna raise again. I know he will at the last day. Jesus said, look at me, Martha. Who do you think I am? I'm the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God that should come into the world. Mary went to Martha and said, the master's come calling for you. She got up to go to the grave. And they thought she was going to weep. But the heart of Jesus was there. The Bible said that Mary went and she left and the mourners that came to comfort her left and said she's going to grave to weep. 
No, she wasn't going to the grave to weep. She was going to see Jesus. She's not going to have those tears any longer. She's been crying. They've been mourning for her. They've been bringing food in and comforting her and trying to help her. But Jesus has come to wipe away her tears because his heart is for her. She came to Jesus and Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping which came with her and he groaned in the spirit. But she said the same thing that Martha did. If you'd have been here. He can say, now hold on, hold on, I'm here. You don't have to worry anymore. My, 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 my. When Jesus shows up, you don't have to worry anymore. When we were over there in that room the other day, yesterday, and death came on my brother, the Holy Ghost spoke into that room. And he was lifting his hands not long before that and he wanted his family in there, but when Jesus came, they were weeping and crying and going on, and they should, but they don't have to weep as those that have no hope. We're to weep, but he's going to wipe those tears away because he took him through the atmosphere beyond the stars and beyond the clouds and beyond where the birds fly. He picked him up and ushered him into glory and the devil can't claim him anymore. I'm telling you, he cannot bother Dean West anymore. God's gonna take us to where the devil can't bother us anymore. I'm going to a city not made by hands. I'm not singing a song I'm singing in worship. My time's gonna come. Your time's gonna come. You've been in the room with your relatives when the angels came and picked them up and carried them into heaven. <clears throat> so Jesus came and he groaned in his spirit. He was troubled. His heart was feeling for Lazarus and his family. And he said, where have you laid him? They said, Lord, come and see. And the Bible said, Jesus wept. And some of them said, could not this man that opened the eyes of the blind have been here that this man should not have died? We know he loved him. Why would he, why to let this happen? Jesus came to the grave and it was a cave and a stone laid upon it. Jesus told Martha, remove the stone. Well, Lord, he stinks, but now well, I'm gonna give him some perfume. <laughs> I'm gonna take the stink away. I'm gonna give him life. Get that stone away from here. They rolled it back and he looked into that cold tomb. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And he came forth, grave clothes and all. He said, get the grave clothes off of him. Get the napkin off of his face. He don't need it anymore. He's not in the grave. Jesus is going to give us a robe of righteousness. <coughs> They're going to take that body and put it in the ground. But when Jesus comes, I'll have a new body. Praise the Lord. Woo! I'll have a new life. He's going to take away the gray clothes and give you a robe of righteousness and a crown of glory that fades not away. Get the gray clothes off. He's not dead now. He's alive. He raised Lazarus from the dead to mortality, but one of these days, Lazarus did finally die, but he's going to raise him to eternal life. The heart of Jesus is occupied for us. Psalm 78 and 39, for he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passeth away and cometh not again, even in Israel when they were doing wrong. His heart still loved them. He wanted to help them. He still touches us. With our feelings today, Hebrews 4, 15 and 16, for we're not, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in the help of time and need. He's here. Psalms 103, 13, like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. Let me hurry on. 
We see the mind of Jesus is occupied for us. Not only is he occupied with, with his heart for us, his mind, he thinks on us. In Psalm 40 and 17, Behold, I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Thou art my help and my deliverance. <coughs> Make no tarrying, O my God. Psalm 40 and 5, Many, O Lord my God, are the, thy wonderful works which thou hast done. And thy thoughts which are to usward, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. His mind's upon us. In Psalm 115 and 12, the Lord hath been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. Amen. He'll bless Israel. He'll bless the people. He'll bless the ministry. He'll bless all of us. His mind's on us. He thinks upon you when you're not thinking upon him. We see the hands of Jesus are occupied for us. He's untiring in his labor for us. <coughs> He does it with unfailing strength. In Isaiah 41 and 10, fear thou not. Whew. For I am with thee, be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. You're gonna need that hand one day. You're gonna be in a deep valley. You're gonna be in a predicament. And if you live long enough, you're gonna live and die and you're gonna need the hand of God. Psalm 37, 23 and 24, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down for thou, for thou Lord, shall uphold him with thy hand. He upholdeth us. That word upholdeth in Greek or Hebrew means to take hold of in, favorable, in a favorable sense. It's gonna hold us. We see the eyes of Jesus are occupied for us. He watches over us as a vigilant shepherd. In Psalm 121 and one through five, I will lift my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He said, he will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth thee shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all over. All evil, the Lord shall preserve thee. He's gonna be with you. Gonna preserve you from all evil and all your enemies and everything you have come against you. The eyes of Jesus see everything, Job 34 and 1 declares, for his eyes are upon the ways of man and he seeth all his goings. Nathaniel came to him. Philip had invited him and Jesus called him an Israelite indeed in whom there's no guile. Nathaniel said, from which knowest thou me? He said, I saw you. Woo! Before Philip invited you to come and see me. Philip went to Nathaniel and said, we found him whom Moses and the law of, and the prophets did right. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph, we found him. Oh! Nathaniel called him. He said, thou art the king of Israel. Thou art the son of God. He said, because I told you, I saw you. When Philip met you, said, yeah, that, said you'll see greater things than this. You're gonna see the angels of God coming from heaven, descending from heaven. You're gonna see me in a greater way. In Hebrews 4, 13, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open under the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Psalm 139 and 15, my substance was not hid from thee. <laughs> he knows you before you ever call on him. He sees me in the morning when I'm praying. He sees me when I'm fighting devils. I went in a place the other day and the devil just jumped all over me. But I'm used to that. I'm glad he does. If you don't bother me, I'm not doing nothing to hurt him. I ought to tire his playhouse up. I ought to make him so mad he can't stand to see me show up. Come on now. 
We got power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the devil. You got power. In Jesus' name, you have authority from God. You're an heir and a joint heir with Jesus. You're the anointed of God. You're God's choice. You're God's people. You're the bride of Christ. Don't bypass my word. You will be free because of my word. You will be kept because of my word. And you will be ready because of my word, saith the Lord. Raise up your hands and praise him. The ears of Jesus is occupied for us. He hears us because he's our high priest. He listens when we pray. Sometimes I don't think he does, but he does. Psalm 34, 15, the ears of the Lord are open to the cry of the righteous. Verse 17, the righteous cry of the Lord heareth and delivereth them from all their troubles. Isaiah 59 and uh, 1, behold, the Lord's hand is not short and neither his ear heavy that he cannot hear. But his eyes are on you. His ears aren't heavy, but his eyes see in everything about him. So if he can hear you, he can see you. We see the lips of Jesus are occupied for us. He speaks on our behalf. He hears us as a high priest, but he also speaks as a prophet. And he leads as a king. Hebrews 7, 25, I'm float closing quickly. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for us. Whoo! <laughs> I will tell you something. You may think you're not liked, and there's some people probably don't like you, but he loves you. Whew. It don't matter. He loves you. And the devil hates it. He don't like it because Jesus loves you and his love corralled you. His love brought you to an altar. His love saved you. His love sanctified you. His love baptized in the Holy Ghost. His love's a keeping a walking with you and you're singing a song and you've got joy and you're worshiping the Lord and you've got victory because of Jesus. Oh! The most important thing that I gave unto you was my son. The most important blessing that you have received is my son. My word, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. He's been in the beginning, he'll be in between, and he'll be in the end, and he will be forever, saith the Lord. My, my, my. He speaks to sin for us. It goes. He speaks to disease in the name of Jesus. It can be cursed. Not every time, but he can curse it. He speaks to trouble and it vanishes. He speaks to Satan and he flees and leaves. He can't take it. Everything he speaks gives audience and obeys his commands. One day he'll speak perfection. And we're getting up. Those that put in the ground and if they're cremated, they ain't going to get out of it. I think that cremation was given by people that uh, thought they would just be smarter than God and they just destroyed all. Listen, the sea is going to give up the dead that's in it. I don't care if you're in a million pieces, God's going to bring that body back. If you're a sinner, you're going to stand before God, the great white throne. But if you're a Christian, I don't care where that body goes. You're coming out. And you're go- My God, you're going to meet him in the air. And you're going to forever be with the Lord because he is with you. In closing, please come to the instruments. Sister Shortridge, come to the organ, please. That's a command. 
<laughs> it's all right. I'm picking. I am happy because I know him. Only you know what you know about yourself. Nobody can, there's nobody can really judge you. Not, not, not really. Because you don't see what God sees. God sees things in me you may not see. And I can see things in you that God sees and I may not understand. But God understands it all. And Jesus is ready to do a work for you. Luke 24, I just preached on it a few days ago. Those two men were going from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And what Jesus does, he's occupied and he's occupied to walk with us. He walks with us. Stand please. God give him feet. They were talking about Jesus and his crucifixion and Jesus just showed up and walked with them. He finally, in making a long story short or maybe a story short, they finally realized that it was Jesus because when he first walked with them, their eyes were beheld. They couldn't know him. But the more they walked with him, the more interesting he got. He started opening open the scriptures to him, said, why are you so sad? Well, you haven't heard what happened in Jerusalem these days? No, said concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a prophet mighty in word and power. And he was delivered to our leaders and they condemned him and they crucified him. But there's ladies that were before at the grave that come back and said he's alive. <laughs> he said, oh fools and slow, slow of heart to understand all the prophets have spoken. Ought not Jesus to have died in the end of his glory? And beginning from the scriptures, he preached everything about Jesus. And he walked on like he's going to go off. It was in the evening. They said, no. He said, we want you to go with us home. And he walked with them, his feet. He sat at the table and took bread and blessed it and broke it and when he took the bread and broke it their eyes were open and they saw Jesus you'll never see him you'll never see him till you take the bread you'll never see him till you take the bread when you take the bread your eyes are open your eyes are open to the devil and his tactics your eyes are open to sin and you don't want to sin anymore your eyes are open to the world and you want to be spiritual and holy your eyes are open to hatred and you don't want to hate anymore. You want to love. Your eyes are open to worship and you don't want to follow Satan any longer. You're going to walk with Jesus and talk with him. You're going to live for him and he's going to be the difference in your life. I want you to feel the altar this morning. And just realize he's not too busy to answer you. He's here to answer you right now in this service. Come and talk to God. <coughs> Amen. Pray for my sister Martha. She's a watching us this morning. Her and her daughter, she watches us from California. Sherry, we're praying for you and the family. She in just a not too long. We're praying for you. God, touch everyone at this altar and touch Martha and touch our family. Touch us all, God, to understand you bring us to a place where we love each other and we pray one for another. We're here to help. We're here to be blessed. You didn't turn anybody away that came to you in faith. Everybody that called on your name, God, you heard them and you answered their prayers and you'll do it again. you do it for my brother. Touch my brother here. He's got a load, God. They got loved ones that just passed away and got the main things. You're ready. They're ready to go, God. Oh, God, that's what counts. Jesus is precious to me. Talk to him this morning. Talk to Jesus. He he's, is he's not too Savior, occupied. He wants to hear Lord from you. He wants you to call on his name. He wants you to believe Jesus him. He wants you to trust him. How he's precious to me. Shibo, ya, ta, ta, ma. Jesus God, touch her, God. is touch her, Jesus. precious. Touch her, Jesus. He is <laughs> So precious, Jesus is precious 
to Touch your Jesus. me. My Savior, my Lord, and preach Jesus. my Master, I preach to you, Lord. You're the answer to Jesus all of us. Jesus, you've been with us. You've been with us, Sister Hannah. God, they've been down in that dark valley, me. but they smelled the rose and they saw the lily. Ha 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 ha! Touch them, God. Touch them, God. Touch us this morning. Help us, Lord, to understand who you are and what you're trying to do for us. Let us allow ourselves to be pliable unto you, God. Put me on the wheel and mold me in your likeness. Make me what I need to be in Jesus' name. I want to move up, Lord. I want more. I want more from you, God. Touch Elizabeth. Wonderful little saint, God. Touch her, God. Touch Sister Debbie. Touch this young man, God, help him this morning. Luke, God. <coughs> I want to cough that drainage gets in my chest. I start talking and it's true. The devil fighting me. I don't care. It's all right. If you heard me on the internet say that, that's the truth. God bless. Well, thank you, Jesus. Kamba shama kanda, shama kanda mashanda, kamba shanda, you kanda mashanda, mashanda. It's a happy man, Lord. He's got such a joyous spirit about him. I love his spirit. Touch my brother, God. You got him in your hands and you'll order his steps and devils come against him. But he stood firm. He had compromise. He's held on to the truth. He's got opposition, but you're not too busy for him, God. Touch us this morning. Touch us, Jesus. Touch your God. Touch her uncle. Cousin, whatever the kid is. Touch my brother God. Jesus is precious. He is so precious. Jesus. Precious to me. Hallelujah. God bless you. Can't get in the right key here. Touch him, God. Woo! God's hands on you. The devil's a liar. And you will shine. You will shine. The Lord is telling me to tell you, you will shine. You're already shining, but it's going to get brighter. God's going to do a miracle and a work in your life. Don't know when or how, but God told me to tell you He's going to do something for you. You've been faithful to Him. Hallelujah. Touch us. Touch us. Love you, Brother Luke. Shut up, my mama.
appreciate your attention. I appreciate you being here. I don't take it for granted. I just appreciate you and I love you. Praying for about all of you that's in this church when I pray. Praying for Sister Stein's brother. Praying for God to, he's already done some things. He's already done some things. God's still on the main line. Just pray for me this drainage to get him and start choking me and strangling me while I'm preaching. It's kind of hard. That's reason I was preaching slower. But it's still the word, isn't it? I love it. It keeps me straight. I'm not molding my life after me or anybody. I'm molding it after this right here. This is it. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Don't eat too much lunch.